I want to show you how to make your alcohol turbo stove to operate this way. It takes some uh, important steps so you don't um, get frustrated, but I want to show you the steps that I had to take in order for me to make it work this way. Everybody can do it, and I want to show you right now. This coil that you see over here, this copper coil, is about 3 sixteenths of an inch. It's not more than a quarter inch uh, in diameter. Uh, so it's important to use something that is not that thick. This is a 12 ounce quarter pine uh, yard, so you can do this for you know canning or whatever. I found it at Walmart. You can buy it by the boxes. Uh, anyway, you need a hacksaw so you can cut the pipe with. You're also gonna need uh, other elements like tape, so you can actually um, use it on the pipe in a moment. Uh, JB glue, this thing, or JB weld, is a two-part uh, material that you will mix. A piece of half-inch half pipe, no matter how long it is, it's important to have a piece of half-inch pipe. Weak, this is um, like an eighth of an inch weak. Uh, some drill bits, important to have the drill bits, and I'll show you for what. And a, a, a screw gun is important. Also a funnel, uh, because you're gonna put some stuff into the pipe. And this is isopropyl alcohol, 91%. This is what you need. And uh, sand. This sand is gonna help you to avoid some frustrations with your bending. And I'm gonna show you in a moment. So let's cut about, I would say 16 inches of, um, of pipe. Use the hacksaw. Remember that you need to clean the ends so you don't have um, little, um, uh, pieces that are going to interfere with your wick. You also, if you were to install it inside, you want to make sure that it goes almost to the bottom. You leave about half inch uh, from the bottom up, and from there you start making your loop. And normally what people will try to do is to kind of loop it like that, but here's the big issue. If you do it like that, you're going to flatten the pipe inside. So for that, what you're going to do is they're going to take the funnel, and you're going to, you know, just put a little piece of tape because that, that, that pipe is so small, that you have to take a little piece of pay, uh, 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 tape and just kind of make sure that the sand is going to go inside. After you have it all the way inside, make sure that uh, it's shook really well. Uh, you want to cap the other end. By doing this, what you are creating is some sort of support. So by bending the pipe, it will maintain the shape. Make sure that you go all the way and that the pipe at the end, those two ends, are nice and level. So uh, you have to take all the sand out. Be careful, don't blow that on your face. So try to just kind of shake this as much as possible. Make sure that maybe you can put a little bit of water in it or something, but make sure you don't kind of blow that in your eyes. Um, cut the piece of pipe and just kind of, you know, file all the edges so you don't cut yourself or you don't damage the wick. Now you have to make the two perforations on the lid, uh, the can lid. And um, the important thing is that you cut just about the diameter of the pipe don't go too big um, although you're going to put a little bit of that JB, JB weld uh, it's better to be as accurate as possible so just find a, a bit that will will do that work for you now that that you know that it's going all the way in we need to make one single perforation on the top of the loop that's the only thing be, be careful i'm using an eighth of an inch uh, actually a uh, 16 of an inch drill bit i tried an eighth of an inch and the other one just to experiment but an eighth of an inch is only them as much as you need to perforate now mix the same amount of the jb well uh, so uh, and also you have to let this dry for about at least 12 hours so it gets hard enough remember that this material will sustain the heat you are not um, able to do the same thing with silicon and all the stuff they will just melt so make sure that you bring it all the way down about half inch from the bottom up uh, and apply your jb well um, if you want to use a tooth uh, pick, it's probably better to. I mean, I, I noticed when I, this this was the first version, but when I cut that to half or or just to have a tip, it's better so you can smear this better around the pipe. So you know, just just a little note over there. Make sure that you put it on the top and on the bottom and let it dry. That is important. Now the wick, what we're gonna do, the, depending on the size of the wick, you want to make sure that it goes in all the way. That is not extremely tight inside because you want the the alcohol to go up. In this case, I found this at a hardware store. And what I did uh, in this version is that I cut it to half. This thing is about four inches long, so it's not it's not that, that short. And I left about, I will say another inch on the bottom. So, you know, now you have um, a lot of alcohol going up. But, you know, I thought maybe 
maybe my frustration was that maybe not enough alcohol is going up. So let's try it. Now, uh, temperature is fairly cold. So here's the first issue. I think that um, when you have a cold weather or, you know, it's, it's the, the alcohol is just too cold, it's not going to turn on that easy. So that's the first thing that I realized that a lot of people don't tell you. It's like, oh, you need to use a torch to heat up your coil. But, you know, what's the point? I mean, if you have a torch, you don't need a little emergency stove. I mean, you already have something bigger, more powerful. So as a lighting method, it's fine like this. It's going to blow. It's going to, you know, just kind of stay on like that. But we want to make sure that it has enough propulsion so um, we can cook with it. So that's why it has to be extremely sealed tight. Make sure that the seal is really well. And this is the bigger version. And I say, well, maybe a bigger version is going to give me a bigger flame. And, and sure enough, it gave a, 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 some sort of a bigger flame, but nothing that you will say, oh, I'm going to cook with this and it's going to be awesome cooking with it. Uh, so, so that's the same situation that if the alcohol is too cold, we're not going to be able to cook with it. And, you know, it's just going to be a beautiful little piece there kind of sitting on the desk or on the table. And we don't want that. I mean, although it can, you know, can lit up the room, we want to make sure that we can cook with it. So that's why uh, I want to show you the, the, the method that you're going to use. So see, um, you know, with some time, it's going to start giving a bigger flame. It looks kind of cool, nice, but this is as far as it goes if you don't do nothing else. And I don't want you to have that frustration. You want to make sure that it works. So you go to a camping and you're going to be able to cook with that little alcohol stove. So here's the solution. The first thing is that you want to make sure that you have a solid surface. Now, you see, I let it burn for a while and see if that was the difference. But uh, here's the bigger version, coils a little bigger, the pipe a little bigger. And that pipe being a little longer may work somehow. And I'll show you why. Well, I mean, if you close this one, and I'm going to try the three of them right in front of you, you will realize that the biggest issue over here is that, again, the alcohol is too cold. How are we going to take care of that stuff? I mean, if, if the alcohol is too cold, we're going to have to have another stove heating up the alcohol or something like that. That probably doesn't work. So I have a better solution I'm going to show you in a moment. So if you notice, I mean, no matter how much flame you put, I mean, a lot of alcohol was there uh, getting into the pipe to say that maybe alcohol is the one that you need. If you put an excessive amount of alcohol on the pipe, what it does is that it bursts and then you just kind of evaporate and that's it so in a hard surface that is waterproof i mean actually fireproof <laughs> uh you know, a piece of block or anything that is not gonna burn you're gonna put a metal tray a metal plate a metal tray something that you can contain your little stove with something that you can hold the stove in you know nothing too big it can be uh, a piece of a, a can you know a large can that you can put it in but what we're going to do is we want to make sure that first you, you have a little more flame that you can kind of heat up your stove with. So if you pour a little bit of alcohol on the bottom and on the top, that will kind of give it a head start with the, the heating up of the, of the recipient. So, so your alcohol, the top is just going to heat up the, the coil that is on top, the piece of copper piping. So the, the, the second thing that you need to do is just kind of put a little bit of more flame on the bottom. So the bottom is going to is going to be the one that, by being a little bit warmer, it's going to turn on easier. Now you may not have that issue if it's summertime, but if it's winter, you're going to be in trouble because the the, the alcohol is going to be too cold. So this is a cool solution. Look, I mean, it's going to it's turning on. You have a little bit of heat. That's fine. You know, it's, it's doing something. But if you put a little bit of alcohol on the bottom and turn it on. Now you're going to start seeing that, um, you know, that, that alcohol is going to evaporate in a moment. And the cool thing is that you're not going to have an explosion because you have that little relief hole on the pipe. So whatever pressure you create is going to come through that little hole. And that's going to start making a huge difference. You can see the changing of temperatures right now. I'm looking with this little thermometer that I have over here. You're going to start seeing the change in temperature and you see and you feel the pressure coming out of the alcohol you can actually now understand that is because the alcohol was not hot enough that the little stove was not working 
Obviously, you have to follow the steps that I left you here, but it's important to remember that is uh, the alcohol um, being warm one of the important things of the little stove. Obviously, by, by the copper pipe being nice and warm, what's gonna happen is gonna transfer that heat inside your recipient, inside the little jar, and it's gonna heat up the alcohol, so that process will help you. But by having this method and the way I'm doing it, you can actually use it as survival tool, not as a little decorating lamp. I, I mean, for that, we can use some other different methods. But now we can cook with it. We're gonna have a nice blue flame. That is gonna help. And in fact, I mean, if, if, if worse come to worse, as long as you have a flat surface where you can put a little bit of alcohol to have that, that uh, little stove working, it will be fine. I'm containing it into this container here, this little metal container which is awesome. But, you know, worst case scenario, you put a little bit on the slab or the concrete slab there or the, you know, the granite or whatever you have there. And, and you know, as long as the, the alcohol is warm, that will work really well. Look how much power comes out of the little stove. And obviously with that torch-like flame, you're gonna heat up the, the pipe and that pipe is gonna transfer the heat inside and that's why it's creating that beautiful loop of heat coming out it's going to help you to cook i mean obviously you're not going to use it for like five six hours you want to use it you know for emergency you know half an hour so it will be awesome you can refill the back again once it's nice and cold remember to follow me in all social media instagram as hugo f korea diy and facebook as hugo korea diy and in youtube as hugo korea i have a ton of videos teaching you about construction traveling uh, about all these cool experiments and a lot of things that you can learn from me and that I learned from other people. So here's another um, representation of what I was talking about. If the surface is nice and warm, now you can have all the little stoves running nice and warm and they're gonna produce a nice flame. Obviously, find a support so you can cook on top of them. You can make something up you know, to, to cook on top of them, but they work great. Thank you so much for watching and hope this video will help you to make your own little stove.